Hi, my name is Jeff Katz, and I uh, will be going over several of our products, including the relays, our switches, our connectors, and our PIR sensor. Uh, so first, I just kind of wanted to go over the type of mechanical and solid-state relays that we have available for autonomous guided vehicles. And there's a number of functions that relays can serve within the autonomous guided vehicle or autonomous uh, robotic uh, controls. And the first one of those would be uh, controlling the actual motor. Uh, another one would be for charging and discharging of uh, the battery. Um, and also for uh, safety circuits, uh, potentially, such as uh, emergency braking um, and LiDAR sensors as well, could, uh, could be controlled by relays. And uh, we also have uh, solid state options as well for battery insulation deterioration and for battery monitoring as well. So here you can see kind of a, a schematic where we do offer uh, different types of relays for pre-charging, uh, such as our EP series, which are completely sealed hermetically um, with, uh, with hydrogen gas filled. Uh, and the purpose of that is to be able to switch high voltage D uh, without uh, the electrical arc destroying the contacts of the relay. And we're able to get that into a really small size. Um, and basically, the pre-charge would be used to uh, discharge any kind of uh, capacitance in the vehicle before cha charging the uh, main battery. And then we have uh, several different relays for the actual uh, main charging as well. Also on the control board, we do have options uh, for power photomos, uh, particularly for electronic magnetic brakes of the motor. Uh, we do have various safety relays and signal relays as well, for that matter. Uh, here's uh, a, an example circuit of where we've seen one of our relays controlling the main battery and also uh, for the motor control as well. So a lot of traditional uh, applica um, designs have been using uh, solid state uh, IGBT for the switching. However, we've noticed that in a lot of these cases, uh, sometimes the vehicle would actually uh, catch on fire. And so a lot of these designs have been moving towards a mechanical relay solution. Um, and we've seen our HE-S relay, which I'll go into a little bit more detail in uh, being used for this type of application to give it some uh, galvanic isolation. Um, and then we also uh, do see our relays being used in both wired and wireless charging power supply configurations. Um, so that would be on the the charger itself, as well as uh, as well as on the uh, autonomous guided vehicle. Um, one thing I did want to point out is a lot of the relays uh, that we have for mechanical side side are AC relays. However, um, although they do not have the DC ratings on the actual data sheet, we do have a lot of reference test data we can provide uh, showing the DC rating. So for example, our HES relay uh, can handle 35 amps at 75 volts DC, or it can handle 10 amps at 110 volts DC, even though it's rated for 277 volts AC. And that's just one example. Uh, so I just want to go into a little bit more detail about the HES relay. So uh, what's interesting about this one is the contact arrangement. It actually has two normally open contacts as well as a normally closed auxiliary contact. And the purpose of that auxiliary contact is that you can monitor the normally open contacts for welding and design a safety circuit around it. Um, also, this relay features a very low coil holding uh, voltage as well, so it doesn't use up a whole lot of power. Uh, once the relay is energized, you can reduce the coil voltage uh, so that it's only using up 170 milliwatts power. Uh, here's another type of uh, relay that we are also recommending for autonomous guided vehicles, and this is a slim type safety relay. And these use mechanically linked contacts, uh, similar to the previous uh, slide where uh, it's got several normally open contacts as well as normally closed contact configurations that are linked together 
So if you do have any kind of welding, this would be able to very quickly detect without any additional circuitry um, if you have any uh, welding going on. And so this is a nice, very small, slim type uh, size as well as uh, very low power consumption down to 170 milliwatts holding power. Uh, I also wanted to quickly mention that we do have solid state solutions. Uh, we have what we call photomos. And basically, these use MOSFETs as the output. So we actually have two MOSFETs per channel. Um, the way that these operate on the input side is an LED. Uh, so it's current driven. Um, once the <clears throat> once the LED uh, charges up, uh, there's actually a photocell inside that converts the light into a voltage. It then is used to charge the two MOSFETs. Once it reaches the gate threshold, then the MOSFETs become conductive and turns on the load. Um, and the advantage to going to uh, this type of technology rather than mechanical relay, one is for the long life, so you're going to have a theoretically infinite life. Uh, you can get a much smaller size relay without the moving contacts, uh, very highly reliable, uh, very good against shock and vibration. So if your vehicle is uh, possibly uh, going to have any shock and vibration. This relay is very resistant to that, and there's also no mechanical sound. So a lot of uh, what we've seen this type of relay being used for is in the battery monitoring and also battery insulation detection. So um, our photomos have a range up to 10 amps uh, and also up to 2,000 volts. Um, at the 10 amp range, it's, it's more for low voltage uh, and DC type applications. Uh, and then on the 200 2,000 volts uh, type applications. It's usually uh, very small size current loads. Um, so one example here would be uh, for battery monitoring uh, for the actual cells. So the way that this is done is you would have the battery cell side that you would turn on to charge a capacitor and you would use the photomos as isolation for charging up that capacitor. And then you would have a separate set uh, where where of photomos that would turn on and to discharge the capacitor with the measuring side equipment. So uh, the challenge here in using this design is you need to have very good isolation between input and output and our photomos is able to achieve the really high isolation. Uh, it could do 5,000 volts between input and output and also very uh, high voltage isolation across the output terminals as well. Uh, and I also want to mention we do have other traditional types of uh, solid state relays, uh, which are triac driven or transistor driven. Uh, one example here is our AQAD, which is has a transistor output. Uh, so it's designed for DC applications. So there's two variations. One is 30 amps at 100 volts DC, and the other is 10 amps at 600 volts DC. So this is uh, built in with a varistor uh, for excellent surge absorption uh, and has an internal diode that protects the element on the output output for this particular DC type. And there also is an LED indication as well to allow the uh, operator to see if it's uh, currently functioning. Um, moving on to snap action switch type products uh, away from relays. So we've seen a lot of these um, for various type of applications, particularly if you have any kind of lid that opens and closes. Uh, for example, uh, in a cleaner, you may have a dust box um, that you would open and close. And so this, this switch would be used to detect that lid detection. Uh, but maybe more commonly for AGVs uh, would be for bumper detection or for tire floating detection. So if you have uh, uh, make any contact with another object, whether it's on the floor or a wall, for example, uh, it would engage the switch and let you know that, uh, that the robot has made contact. Um, and so we offer both sealed and non-sealed variations of these switches. And these are extremely durable and have a long history of being used in the automotive space as well. Uh, we do have one specialty type, uh, which is our ASQMR relay. And what's interesting about this one is it actually has internal resistors inside of the, of the switch. And that allows you to actually diagnose any kind of failure mode from uh, an open circuit versus a short circuit. So if you have a wire cut, for example, you'll actually get a different voltage output than you would if it was just a short circuit or an open circuit.
Um, we also offer uh, custom wire harness solutions. So if you are using uh, a, a, a micro switch in your design, I just wanted to point out that we do have the ability to mold and assemble different uh, wire harnesses. Um, and th this is a custom solution, but we do have a factory in Mexico. Uh, so if you were to give us your bill of materials with all the components used for the wire harness, our, our uh, factory in Mexico would procure all the components and assemble them together. And it would be one par single part number uh, for your design. And it, make, it makes things a lot easier when you have uh, when you're only working with a single factory uh, for multiple components, particularly uh, if any quality issues arise. Um, and then we can also help reduce the lead time as well, uh, since everything is coming out of just one factory. Um, next, I want to move on to a solution that we have uh, on the sensor side. And this is for mainly for occup occupancy sec sensing, uh, which we see a lot in autonomous uh, robots for disinfection. Uh, so we do have uh, infrared, uh, passive infrared sensor devices. And some of the advantages for our passive infrared sensors is that we're able to get them extremely small in size. Uh, we're able, uh, compared to our competitors out there, have a much better sensitivity as well. So it's able to detect uh, much better performance uh, compared to discrete type solutions. And everything is all inside of a one chip package ASIC. So it is a plug and play device. It's very simple to, to operate. It's uh, very easy to design into a circuit and could save uh, much, uh, a lot of time than having to do it discreetly. Uh, but basically the way that this sensor operates is it detects any change in infrared as a uh, person would uh, move from one detection zone to another. So it doesn't detect what direction the person is walking in, but it will detect if there is motion present. Um, and we do have various lenses available as well. Uh, and these lenses dictate the field of view angle as well as uh, the distance as well. So if you have a specific requirement for how far out you need to detect and how wide of a field of view you need, we might most likely uh, have a lens. And we could also do some simulations as well so you can see what lens detects uh, uh, what distance at what height, depending on what your setup is in your design. Uh, one thing that we do uh, that I should say about this design is that um, these sensors are not to not meant to be used while the robot is moving. Um, so normally, once the robot is in place where it needs to start detecting to see if there's motion, that's when uh, the infrared would be uh, useful in the application. Um, and then there's one last product I want to go over, which is our connectors. So. Panasonic has been making uh, connect very extremely small size connectors uh, for decades now. Um, actually, the largest pitch we offer is half a millimeter between the pins, and we go as down to 0.3 uh, millimeter pitch. Uh, and a lot of these are used in very ruggedized type of applications, uh, such as uh, even the uh, cell phone type market. So uh, they're extremely robust when it comes to shock and vibration. And our newest type of connector that we offer is our 5G connector, which I'll go into a little bit more in depth. And the purpose of this is for five millimeter wave antenna modules. Uh, so just to give you a little bit more background on our connectors, um, there are several features that make it very robust. Uh, the first is what we call double contact or V-notch construction. This means there's actually two points of contact where the socket and header touch each other. And the surface to edge contact also increases the contact pressure between the two pieces. Um, also, the V-notch gap between the two allows for any foreign matter such as flux uh, to, or dust to fall in through that gap rather than clogging up your connection point. The second feature is the bellowed contact construction. Basically, we roll the metal surfaces rather than stamping it out uh, from a metal plate. And this allows us to uh, get the flexibility characteristics and, and uh, to perform more like a spring, which uh, enables the connector contacts to absorb the shock and vibration in the direction that it needs to.
Also, uh, we employ a nickel barrier construction, and the purpose of this is to prevent solder from creeping up the terminal and getting inside the connector, uh, which is really important for these small size connectors. And we also porosity treat, treat uh, the surface of these connectors as well. Even though uh, the top layer is gold plating, uh, because it is such thin layer of gold, there's a possibility of pinholes developing uh, in corrosive environments. So this porosity treatment would fill it in with a conductive membrane and give it the same performance as though it had thick gold plating. And so I wanted to bring the attention back to the five millimeter wave 5G connector. And basically this has really good signal integrity parameters by use of the metal shield in insert molding in the connector, which helps isolate the high speed frequency signals. So if you do require a high speed 5G type uh, communication within your robot. Uh, we do have this feature. Um, and then it also offers five additional uh, standard signal pins as well. Uh, and again, this has extremely high removal force. It's very tough against shock and vibration. And we believe this to be the smallest sized 5G connector in the market with the best signal integrity parameters. Panasonic Industry